And we do practice an open table. So if you're joining us today and you are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, then please feel free to partake with us. Let me find my place here. Thank you, brother. Pastor. Friend. Okay, our word of communion. Our word of communion today comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. It's just one verse, so you're welcome to turn there. And I'll give you a moment. But it is just one verse, 1 Peter 2, 2. Again, our word of communion comes from 1 Peter 2.2, 2, and it's entitled, The Pure Milk of the Word. Amen. And 1 Peter 2.2 2 says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word, that you may grow thereby. You know, all of us go through seasons when we're not exactly tuned into God's program. When if we're completely honest with ourselves, we want what we want, exactly when and how we want it, and we're not taking no or wait for an answer. We want that Burger King drive through Uber brings it to me while I stay in the comfort of my own home kind of life. Now, last year, when coronavirus came to the States and the stay-at-home orders went into effect, all but the most essential workers were forced into this kind of daily life. And the world knew very little about COVID-19. So from a public health perspective, the safest thing to do was to keep people home and slow the progression of the virus. And that's a good thing. This brought, however, a whole new set of challenges, like working from home, like trying to find toilet paper, <laughs> like deciding which Netflix series to binge watch next. <laughs> But it also brought a whole new series of temptations because most of us, if we're honest, we're relying on those routines of our work lives to keep us on the right track in our personal lives. You know, for me personally, my temptations with food and gluttony rose up from the grave like Godzilla walking up out of the ocean. <laughs> so at first I was able to hide from it, and then I tried to run from it, and then I, it consumed me, and I gained 20 pounds last year because I was relying on my routine, which was gone, uh, here below, not my refuge from above, to carry me daily. Mature Christianity does carry a weight of self-sacrificial service toward others. But if we're not careful, that service becomes the sacrifice and the self becomes the solution. If you love Jesus, it can be easy to say yes, 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 when you see some kind of need without pausing to ask Jesus if that need is for you to fill. And even if it is, it's easy to go, go, go without first and frequently pausing to find rest and respite from the Lord. And that's what happened to me. You know, if you keep driving a car when the change oil light or check engine light comes on, you will eventually, uh, it will eventually wear down and break. And the cost will be far greater in both time and money than if you'd simply paused to get the oil changed or, or whatever was with the engine, get the engine serviced. You know, the Holy Spirit, like a change oil or check engine light, beeps at our hearts, <laughs> telling us when we need a tune-up with the master mechanic. Amen. And if we ignore that beep, we'll end up all sorts of broken. So Peter writes, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word. Now, last time I checked... Newborn babes can't read. So whether you interpret the word here as Jesus or Scripture, either way, he's not saying read the Bible more, check off that daily devotion, fill out that Bible study booklet. Now, don't get me wrong. Daily devotions and Bible studies are essential tools for spiritual growth. 
That's just not what Peter's saying here. Okay, there's a word picture. And so I remember when my wife was nursing our daughter, and they would have to work together to find a calm space where they could spend some time together with my daughter nestled in as she received her nourishment. And I believe that's the picture that Peter is giving us here. As a newborn babe nestles in to receive nourishment from its mother, so we, as God's children, must draw near and nestle into our Savior so He can nourish us through His life-giving Spirit. So whether that means sitting quietly in His presence, or pouring your heart out to Him in prayer, or meditating on a scripture He brings to your heart at that moment, it's essential to our spiritual well-being that we make time in our busy schedules to regularly seek refuge in Him and find rest in His presence so He can nourish us by His Spirit. Because He is where we find strength for today, hope for tomorrow, peace in our hearts, and love for one another. All of that because of the work He did for us on the cross and then proved by His resurrection. And he leads us in both. So when we take communion, we have this wafer here. If you can peel back that top piece of cellophane. That wafer of bread represents the body of Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior that was broken for us. So let's take and eat. And the juice, you have that thicker plastic tab. You can pull back the top, maybe. There we go. The juice represents the blood of Christ, shed for the remission of sins, and is the, the blood shed for the new covenant, giving us the indwelling Holy Spirit. Let's take and drink. Father, once again, we say thank you. We say thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and who rose from the grave to give us new life. Lord, we say thank you once again for the reminder that we need to pause our lives and go to him daily, to go to you daily, to come before your throne, to find rest, to find refuge, to find respite, so that you can recharge us with your Holy Spirit, to guide and direct and lead and empower us as we live for you in this world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.